G'day, my name's Damned, I'm from on the Fantasy Grounds forums, and today I'm going to do another follow-up extension coding tutorial. We're going to do it a little bit differently today. We're going to work from an existing extension, and we're just going to extend it a little bit. So we're going to work from Zuga's handy extension where it calculates coin weight and the adds it to your encumbrance on your 5e character sheet. This is handy for those uh, games where you want to keep some semblance of uh, encumbrance realism. You don't want to have characters carrying around enough treasure to ransom a small kingdom and not having it affect their uh, movement or their ability to, to actually adventure. So this extension went through a number of uh, iterations and uh, to the point where it is today, and you can see here on the uh, forum page, uh, we've got the following fields that have been added into the encumbrance. So we've got the um, this is the initial field, the current uh, encumbrance, and this is the coins, and this is the total coin weight, uh, total encumbrance including the coin weight. And you see, there's a number of follow-up posts to this thread. And what we find is on the last few pages of this, people are suggesting that perhaps this could be improved by allowing you to record some coins that aren't actually carried by the character. So the character may have banked some of the coin, or they may have the coin being carried on a pack animal or some magical transportation device where they don't affect the character's encumbrance. And this is going to happen as your characters become more powerful and collect more treasure. So. As with a lot of things, there are multiple ways of presenting this from a UI perspective. So the first thing I've done is gone to the, I've downloaded the extension and I've unpacked it into uh, a new folder. So it's in my extensions folder. I've created a folder called CW and I've unpacked the files here. And you can see there's an extension file, a scripts file and a Lua file underneath that. So we're going to create a new campaign, uh, not important the name, just as long as it's unique, it's 5e, and we're going to add the coins weight to this, we're going to add the coins weight um, extension to our campaign. And let's load that up. While that's loading up, uh, we might have a quick peek in here, and we can see that the uh, extension file, it's version 2, uh, it's by Zuga, and uh, we can see there's a couple of strings here, um, a script, that's our Lua script, and a window class. And they're the core parts of, of this extension. We'll go in and we'll quickly create a new character. First thing off we'll do is we will load up the 5e SRD so that we've got some material to work with. Load that module up. We'll go to Heroes or PCs, we'll create a new one. Give him a portrait, give him some values in here. Uh, and the reason we'll give him some attributes is because on the inventory tab, it will affect our maximum carrying load and our lift push drag. And we can see these new fields that have been added into the character sheet based on um, this extension. So what happens is we can see here, uh, well, let's add some inventory first. So we'll add some items in here so that we have some, uh, we've, we've got some something to baseline extension on so we've got a chainmail shirt on and um, we'll add a weapon in here battle axe we might add a little bit of adventuring gear we might add a backpack a bedroll perhaps uh, we might add some rope And we can see our current encumbrance is now 81. Now, 
Uh, Adventure has been going for a little while and he's accumulated 200 silver coins. When I add that 200 silver pieces here, the coin weight is 4 and it adds to my total encumbrance now being 85. Might have also accumulated 500 electrum pieces and my coin weight is now 95. Now what this really does is we may find that that treasure of 12,000 copper pieces and they're tempted to uh, try and lug it all the way home and we suddenly find that our encumbrance is way over our maximum load so all that copper coin is going to have to be left behind uh, unless we've got a pack mule to to carry that for us now we talked about the UI the how we're going to fit this in and what I'm thinking is we're going to keep this quite simple we're going to create another number field very similar to this one maybe with the light frame instead of the dark frame put it next to it and any values entered into there they'll still be recorded on the character sheet but they won't run the Lua script that calculates the weight so what's actually happening here is when a value is added in here the Lua script fires and it calculates the weight here and then it calculates the new total here so we'll go and see that over here we can see that <clears throat> we've got a script called coins weight and when we go down to our simple number total load uh, no we're looking for coin amount so coin amount one is this value here this is two three four five and six so when we look at coin amount one that we can see a script on value change so when the value in coin amount one is changed we run a script called coins weight and there's a function in here called on coins value changed let's find that okay we can see function on coins value changed here and this grabs the values and then it runs the next the next uh, function which is compute pc coins weight which is happens down here and it goes through the various processes to actually update make all those changes on the character sheet what we're going to do is add an extra field in here so what we've got is um, a new window class called car sheet inventory contents merge join so this is an existing window class so we're going to find that window class and it's going to be somewhere in the 5e rule set we'll do a find in files that's your best friend when doing fantasy grounds xml and lua coding is the find in files because everything sort of is made up of components that are referenced in multiple files so we can find in the folder campaign the file record car inventory we can find two references to that we can see a class car sheet inventory and we can also see the window class itself so we're going to extend this window class by this tag here merge equals join if we didn't do that we would be replacing it and we don't want to replace it because we've got to copy the whole code over but more importantly if moon wizard makes some other changes to uh, that window class and you're running this extension you won't ever see those changes so what we'll find now is that we've got simple number treasure load simple number total load these are these two values here coin load and the total load and then the next fields that we've got are the labels treasure load label and total load label they are defined at the top of the page here coins and total a little typo in there we might just adjust that we will adjust it down here as well um, and then we've got the simple number encumbrance load the script okay and we've got a so what happens is this one is um, because if we follow the forum thread we'll notice that what was happening is if I added some other items here it was adjusting the current value but it wasn't adjusting these two it wasn't adjusting this value so we've got another uh, script that watches when the encumbrance load value changes it then recomputes the total weight 
when the encumbrance load changes, that's because you've picked up or dropped a piece of equipment, that doesn't change the coin weight, but it does change the encumbrance load plus coin weight, which is what this is. We can now see our number drop add coin amount one. These are defined more fully over here in our source file. We can see there's extra values in here. And we're not going to replace all these values, we're just adding the extras on here. And the extras are simply a script to watch for when the value changes to execute that function. So what we're needing to do is add another value field box that looks quite like this in between. So we'll also need to move these over a little bit. So we need to move the anchoring of these, this, these fields to the left, these ones to the right, and we can add in the extra values in here. So what we're going to do is, uh, first we're going to move the anchoring. We can copy the anchoring from this one, paste it in here, and we're going to move it over. Okay, we, we find this field is 30 pixels wide, plus a little bit of extra um, uh, for the padding, so 30 plus 5 a little bit of padding and then we need half of that again because there's actually three fields one two three fields are here um, we're anchoring to the center line so one and a half of these fields is going to be on the left one and a half of these is going to be on the right so if we're anchoring to the center line we need to anchor for one and a half of these plus a little bit of padding which is going to be roughly 50 pixels we're going to try with 50 anyway so we're going to change this to instead of 160 it's going to be 210 We'll try that anchoring there, 210. And um, when we do that, what we'll do is we'll quickly set up our coding shortcuts, console, reload. And because we're working in the character sheet, we'll drag the character sheet down here as well. Let's do a quick reload. While we're doing that, while that's reloading, we're going to see what else is going to change here. So we're going to add in another uh, box here. We don't want to add a drop add box in here. Uh, we're just going to add a simple number probably. Uh, so I've written a little bit of code beforehand just to get this started. And the code that I've written here, drop it in. So we've got a code a comment code here uh, we've got a simple number rather than a number drop add um, the, the name is coin amount 1a and the source is going to be uh, coin slot 1 amount a where did I get that from I got that from here our source is coin slot 1 amount but we need to store this as a separate value in the database keep it simple we're going to call it uh, exactly the same but with an a at the end and We've got a tooltip non-carried coin, so we'll need a, uh, we'll talk about the tooltip afterwards. Uh, we'll comment that out for the moment. Um, so it's this simple number is going to be uh, anchored to coin amount one. Um, we've got some anchoring fields here. It's going to use light instead of dark, which is where coin amount one was. This number drop add use, uses a frame uh, that's a little bit darker. We're going to have the light one just to differentiate them a little bit. And that should be enough for the moment. We'll save that. And what we should see over here, we won't see all those changes just yet because we were doing some extra changes in the interim. All we did at the moment is move this over. We moved the anchoring for this one over. Let's reload it, see what happens for our next section. Now, yes, I am uh, typing ahead a little bit here just to keep us moving. I'm going to copy this to number two, coin type two. We'll update all the references to one, we'll make them all two. So, this, the new name is this is coin amount 2a. Uh, it's going to be stored as amount or slot two. Amount A, it's going to be anchored to 2, 
everything else is going to be the same there. When we check our code here, we will find that we have a new box. It's a another number type field, a slightly different property system, and you can see it uses the different frame. And we can see our string here needs some adjustment. We'll work on that one next. And we'll do a quick reload of this so that we can see we, we've added the changes for coin slots too as well, rather than me keeping these the code and the view out of sync. We'll just catch them both up. All right, so we've got the new boxes in here. Our anchoring here needs to move over and we need to adjust the position or, or the, the length and the anchoring for the string U fields. Let's do those two next. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is fix the anchoring on coin amount 2. We're going to pretty much just duplicate this text here. Uh, the great thing about this layout is or all this stuff. There's a lot of cut, cut and paste once you work it all out. So we're going to fix up that anchoring and now our string U don't exist in um, our extension. So we hadn't, uh, Zuga hadn't needed to make any changes, but we do. So let's copy these string U over here. And <clears throat> our string U for coin name one, which is basically the string U is um, this string text here where we can freeform, we can add the value of silver pieces or gold coins or whatever in there. Now I've added that value in but it's not visible, it's actually hiding behind that element. What we have to do is the offset here of 10 is no longer big enough because we've now got an extra 30 wide box with some extra padding in here. So let's let's change this to 40 and let's make the string a little bit less long because we'll probably find that we're going to run out of room when we add all these extra boxes in here that this might get a little bit too long. So these fields are ample length, like if we type um, gold pieces, we don't need nearly that much width. So we're going to knock off uh, 10 pixels of that length and we're going to move this or anchor this a little bit further away from where it currently is. Let's quickly do that for number two as well. Coin name two, 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 the offset of 40 and the width of 50, that should be fine. Let's save those and reload. All right, let's view the changes. Oh, we're getting much closer here. So we've got um, the padding here needs an extra five pixels at least, I think. Um, but we're pretty close. So we're going to uh, add an extra bit of padding here and then we're going to duplicate this code to extend this next column. Okay, so let's make the offset 45. We'll do that for both. Now we can simply copy that whole text here. Uh, okay, what we're going to find is that coin amount 3, first we need to work out the anchoring of coin amount 3, but what we can see is that it hasn't been messed up because coin amount 3 is relative anchored to, to these other elements. So as we add extra bits in here, these are simply sliding across. So that makes our, our next set of code quite simple. Go down to coin 3, no need to adjust the anchoring um, because it's a relative anchoring. We're just going to update these to 3, 3. Go right through making sure we get them all. Do the same here for number four. Uh, if you're going to put comments in, try and keep them accurate. Otherwise, they may just add to the confusion of the next person who's reading the code. I think we've got all that, so we'll save that. We'll reload it again. We'll open up our character sheet. Awesome. So this padding here is slightly less than, than what we had on these two, and that's okay. We, we're covering a little bit of room. Okay, 
So we've got to finish off the last two. That should be nice and easy, a little bit more cut and paste. Okay, number five, replacing all the fours with fives. That's great. Do the same for number six. Yes, there's a bit of tedium in doing these codes and code layouts. And this stuff does, does take a little bit of time. It's a little bit quicker for us today in this session because um, I am doing this for the second time because the first time I did it, I used an out-of-date copy of the extension. My mistake. Uh, so I finished off the recording and then rechecked some screenshots on the um, on the forum page that I was referencing and found that there were a whole bunch of uh, differences between what I was seeing and what was on the page because I used an out-of-date extension. Anytime Fantasy Grounds does an update, um, so we at the time of this recording, we've just gone to 3.3.5. You need to check if any of your extensions are causing any compatibility issues. Right, this is awesome. We've got um, our extra fields here. Now, what what we'll see is if uh, I find 100 gold, my coin weight increased by two, my total by two. But if I've also stored 500 gold in the bank, the value that I store there does not increment or change these values at all. That's perfect. But how is the average person who's looking at this for the very first time going to know what these extra boxes are for? That's where that tool tip that I commented out uh, was for. Let's do a quick find and replace here. Quickly change all these. Get rid of the common tags. Okay, so um, M55, yeah, I did dodgy on that find and replace. Probably should just do it manually. Paid more attention to what I was doing. Got to close these tags off properly. What I'm doing there is XML requires every tag to have an open and close. So simple number starts here and it closes here. The slash is to close. You can open and close on one line by putting a slash just inside your closing angle bracket, and, but it's got to be right up against the angle bracket. So um, we've got a car tooltip non-carried coin. So we've got a tooltip. Bring your mouse over those, but I need to define this text res. Let's go to the top of the page here and create a new one of these. What was the text res field was called non-carried coin okay non-carried coin and the description for that is going to be something like this coins in the bank or carried by a pack animal etc let's save that let's reboot this see what we get We're having a look over here. Um, we can now see that we've got uh, the tooltips, coins in the bank or carried by a pack animal. Now, my extension is pretty close to being done here, except that um, this is not a criticism, it's just a, um, a recommendation that you set up your files, your structure the same way that Moon Wizard has in his uh, rule sets, and um, that means that we have all the files in the right folders and we don't stick everything in, in the core set in in the single file you can see that it works perfectly well as it is there's it's not a technical requirement that it be done like this um, it's just uh, the standard that um, more of the newer extensions are being written to 
and the more of the rule sets are being written to. So keeping them all in JPGs or Moon Wizards format. So what we want to do here is create a strings folder. Um, strings. Uh, we want a campaign folder. And we want a graphics folder. So in the campaign folder, we're going to want to put our window class. So we've got this file called record car inventory, which is our um, original file from 5e. I'm going to use that as, as the base, just so I get all the all the bits in, in here. This is called record car inventory. Going to drop all that in here. We're going to get rid of all the content. There's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, we're going to keep the required tags, the XML tag and the root tags, but we're going to move our window class from the extension. I'll grab this whole window class here and we're going to bop it into here. We'll save that. We now need to include this file. Now we can see we've closed that file off. But basically this here now includes that file and we've removed the content from there. We're going to do the same with, with strings. Include file, we're going to go strings. And we're going to call our file strings coin weight. And we do another one. And we're going to go graphics. icons. We'll use that for an announcement text. Okay, so we've got our script here. We want to move these strings into a new string file. So uh, let's create a new, go into strings. I'm going to pretty much copy a file, an existing file structure into there. New text doc. The actual name of these files, um, I'm basing them off JPG's version of the files. Um, again, just keeping everything as uh, similar as, as possible. Now we'll copy our three strings here, we'll not copy them, we'll cut them, paste them into here. So we've got coins, total, and our tooltip, we'll save that. That one's done, which is done. Now we need a graphics file. What do we need the graphics file for? We're going to be doing, we're going to add a little announcement text. Typos matter. Off screen, I've just created a new icon graphic, um, just a, a, a nice Z for uh, the Zuga announcement to uh, message, and we've called the icon name Zuga. There's the path graphics icons icon Zuga. That should be fine. We need to include that file. We've got that. That's fantastic. And now we need an announcement text and. Uh, the announcement text is going to just tell us a little bit about um, this extension. We're going to call this version 3. Uh, we're going to give it a slightly different name just so we can 
find it via the coins weight extension. Um, what else do we need here? Um, so 5e coins weight, the announcement text. Okay, it's a bit of text here to describe what it is. There's an icon Zuga and the font. So we'll wrap that up. We will reload our rule set here one more time and we'll see what we get. And then it should be ready for packaging up as an extension file. Okay, we've got a problem. I've missed one of the files somehow. Okay, campaign replica inventory, replica inventory, not that one, this one, replica inventory. Kashi inventory contents. Okay, that should be right. Uh, inventory. Didn't work though. Why not? Okay, these include files. Uh, should have been here under the base. We'll put them down here. That should be better. Save that again and we will reload the rule set. Check out our inventory again. Perfect. We now have these. Let's just check out the, yep, yeah, they do scale properly as the sheet gets wider. Um, our tooltips work and our, but our announcement still didn't work. So we need to just quickly check that. So the announcement text, uh, the announcement text. Looks like it's in the right spot. Uh, it's possible we might need to just reselect the extension file again. Um, we renamed our extension, so we need to make sure that uh, it's going to load up and select the right extension properly. And that's possibly what's happened here. Load campaign. Our 41D 5E coins weight is there. Fantastic. Let's start that up and let's see what we get. Okay, our announcement text. So we've got the Zuga icon and we've got the description and we have everything down here working. So the last thing to do is to package it all up. So we simply want to select all these contents, send to compressed zip file. Give it a name, I'm going to call this one 5e coinweight.ext, and we can then share that on the forum. And I'm going to add this to the end of the uh, current Zuga thread, and I'm going to add a link to this video once I pub publish it. Thank you very much for listening on the extension. I hope it helps. Uh, enjoy your time playing on Fantasy Grants, and I look forward to seeing all the cool little tweaks and enhancements you add to your games.